People are going to ask you, and rightfully so, the smart ones are going to come to you and say, Colby, how did you do it so fast? You know, there's only been three guys that have ever risen to the top as fast as you. You, Connor. Connor had two fights. His third fight, he was a main event, to remind you. Uh, and then Brock Lesnar. And Brock came in with a different head of steam, but all the same. His very first fight was anticipated. His third fight in, I believe it was his third fight, if I'm wrong, was his fourth. He was fighting for the championship against Randy Couture. So it's you, Connor, and Brock are the only way, uh, guys that have found out how to get in this space and rise up the card to title contention instantly. So when somebody asks you and pulls you aside and goes, hey, man, how did you do it? How did you do it so quickly? What would your answer be? Have you have you stepped back to identify it yet? Have you fully identified how you were able to evoke an emotion, how you were able to come out and, and speak and not be scared and not apologize and be true to yourself? Have you identified that yet, or are you caught up in a big storm and you just it just all happened really fast? Yeah, I, I have uh, identified it, and it's that you know I don't care what people think of me. Everybody's so concerned with uh, how they're projected in their image, and like they don't want people to not like them. And, you know, that's that's why they're not here to do business. They're here for the Ultimate Friends Championships. I'm not here for the Ultimate Friends Championships. I'm not here to make friends. If you don't like me, cool. You don't like me, but I'm here to fight, and I'm here to make money and do business. So, you know, that's definitely the number one thing that I've noticed is most of these fighters are scared to get out of the box. They don't They don't want to... They don't want to be judged. They don't want people to look at them a certain way that, oh, you know, he said this and, and uh, you know, I don't agree with that opinion. I don't care, man. I'm here to make piss people off. I'm here to make people's lives miserable. But they're going to go to sleep thinking about me, and I'm going to wake up the next day and doing the same thing I do, and that's kick ass and take names and make money. Yeah, and isn't it so simple? I mean, what you just said. I fully agree with you, and I, I see it as so obvious. And I am able to stand back at our sport as much as I love it, and I love the guys in it, and I – I admire him and all, all of these different things, but this is a fist fight between two half naked guys. Like, we're not a glamorous group of individuals. I mean, we are some of the lower rungs of society, and you know plenty of fighters. I mean, how many of them do you trust? How many of them do you like? Right? That list starts getting smaller and smaller. And I always do see these fighters that come out. And they'll want to say, you know, ah, Colby's working an angle. Or they'll do it to me and go, ah, Chael's just working a shtick. I go, well, I don't see it that way. I see it as you guys are. Because I know you guys, and you guys are a bunch of scumbags. But you guys want to come on camera and, and and talk about all these things to make yourself look good and make believe that you're you know spending time with kids on the weekend and, and, and make believe that you know you're in bed every night at nine o'clock and make believe like you're an honorable guy. You're the ones that are trying to bow to everybody's face and stab everybody in the back. You're the ones that think it's honorable to tell a lie. We're the ones that have come out and said it's you versus me in a steel cage. So F you, F me, and somebody say go. How that makes us run in a shtick as opposed to the rest of you that are trying to put on this phony baloney uh, nice guy routine so you can get a few nice mentions on Twitter. I don't see it the same way. Completely right. You know, we keep it real, you know. You're not taking pictures and bringing cameras around when you're going to your math club to give back, you know, donate your time or donate your your uh, wisdom to the kids at the wrestling club, but people don't see that. So they, they want to judge you. They see the guy that's, that's uh, promoting his fights and trying to make interest and draw, draw attention to his fights, you know, but they're so in their feelings and they don't, they want you to think the same way they think that it's a complete joke. You know I mean? They should, they should be praising us, you know, like we fight, we're not, we're not solving world hunger. We're not solving world peace. <laughs> right. We're here to get locked up right. in an octagon and go take guys' brain cells. Right. <laughs> Right. And there seems to be like a resentment from our ability to understand that and then in some ways manipulate it. But anytime a fan or even an insider can identify and go, aha, Colby's just trying to get people to watch. It's like, yeah, man, it's on TV. I didn't know this was a secret. (laughs) I'm trying to get people to watch. You've got championships to fight for. But there's also T-shirt sales. That's a number. There's also Live Gate. That's a number on free television. That's a rating and a number on pay-per-view. That's these are all things that a true competitor is going to keep his eye on and observe at all times. And it never ceases to amaze me that when somebody thinks they've identified it, that they've like it just revealed. And I must let the audience in on this fact. It's like no. This is the point. We would like people. I got to go fight that guy for 15 to 25 minutes. I have to go do that. I could drag him outside right now and do it. There's a reason I'm. I want people to tune in. 
I have an ego. I also believe I have a skill set, and I'd like to show it off. Why is that a bad thing? And why, when people think that they've identified that, do they use that as, as though a, a way to pull you down, you know, to tie it in? D.C. and Brock Lesnar, you know, we just saw it over the weekend, and people that are coming out and saying, um, oh, well, that was just marketing. They're just trying to make money. I'm going, yes, it was marketing, which is why we set up the cameras and had a microphone. And, yes, they would like people to tune in because this is a business. What part of that do you feel by pointing out makes you Kreskin? You've just stated the obvious. So true, man. But isn't it, I mean, (laughs) isn't it when somebody will say, Colby, I've had this happen to me. I'm sorry to be wordy on this, but I've had this happen to me, and I just trust that it's happened to you too. I have had reporters say to me, reporters say to me, don't you just do this to get attention? Don't you just run your mouth to to get attention? And I'm sitting back and going, do you not see the irony here? I run my mouth to get attention. Okay, good for you for for pointing out the the obvious, right? But I then go in the ring and fight. You, on the other hand, who just called me on it, only get paid to talk. You're accusing me of getting paid by talking, but you, by definition of being a report, you only are paid to talk. Don't you see the irony in calling out a fighter who's trying to garner attention have you ever thought of it in those terms when a media guy will go well aren't you just uh, you know running your mouth to make money but that's all you do (laughs) that's what you do by definition i do both i do that and then i get in the ring three times a year have you thought about it in those terms you see why that's weird that somebody would call that out as opposed to just sit back and enjoy the show yeah it's 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 completely beyond me you know that's just that's just why i consider it fake news and and all these guys that sit behind their computers and they all have an opinion, a different opinion, but they, they've never been in a steel cage, you know. They've never been locked in and had the world looking at them and, and fighting a trained fighter. So, you know, I, I try not to pay, tr- pay attention to their opinions. You know, before the RDA fight, they're saying one thing, but then they're saying that he was all this great hyped-up man. He was unbeatable at 170. No one was going to beat him, but that after the fight was done, it was m- almost like I fought a different guy than they were writing about before. It was like, you know, they tried to run their narrative, so... You know, I, I try not pay pay attention to the media. You know, it's a bunch of nerds and, and virgins writing all their little scripts. Yeah, but they have to. Yeah. See, they have to insult him or say he wasn't ready. or say, They have to because their only other option is to say, wow, Colby's as good as he said he was. Yeah. They will not do that. You have put these guys in a box. Uh, so much. You, you have frustrated these guys. You've outsmarted these guys. You've used these guys, right? Uh, both were both guilty here. But it creates an anger amongst them to where they would rather put down RDA. They would rather make up a fake excuse that even RDA didn't offer than to just go, by God, he's as good as he says he would. And with somebody Priesbing and Tyron Woodley so we could get this settled. They don't want to give you that due. Yeah. They're going to resist you. They're going to fight you every step of the way. And, uh, and yeah, it, it is. I mean, you came out and said, I'm going to whip RDA. You ended up beating him five rounds. Oh, my God. And to your point. He looked amazing in his last fight against Robbie Lawler. I mean, he looked absolutely amazing. And instead of going, wow, apparently Colby is even better than Robbie Lawler, who's better than Johnny Hendricks, who Dana White himself thought beat GSP. Instead of doing any of this and giving you your due, they would rather make an excuse for him and not give you the credit. And that's something that you're, you're just going to see. Whether you already have and you've noticed it or I'm tipping you off now, that is in your future, my friend. If you, no matter how many rounds you win and how many world champions you stomp, they will do anything they can to not have to go, yeah, he's as good as he told us he was. You know that's coming, though. Yeah, that's coming. That's why, that's why we gotta, uh, we're going to have to figure out who's the greatest welterweight of all time. Me and GSP, that's the only way that I'm going to get that credit. You know, they're saying he's the greatest of all time. You know, he's... He's in Canada uh, he's drinking his little syrup. You know, he's a little syrup sucker. So, you know, that little Canadian geek, he comes to America again and wants wants to prove that he's the best welterweight in the world. He's going to have to go through me, and, and then we'll, we'll see what the, the reporters say after that. Now, that would be a fun fight. Now I'm closing my eyes and go, would I rather see you with GSP or with you with Connor? I don't have an answer to that. I will need more time. I like where your head is at, though. Yeah. GSP or Connor, And that could be the future because I also don't know in your division. And I do have to agree with you. Till not making weight matters to me. The the sport used to agree with me. Now the sport's starting to go the other way. But that matters. 
Um, I don't know that you could make a case for Wonder Boy right now, and I believe he has an injury. I believe he hurt his leg. Usman has been doing very good. People just don't know who he is, and that's not an insult. This is just a reality that he hasn't done a great job of, of making that known. And I'm trying to think, who else would I rather see you in there with? I love, would, of course, would love Connor. I don't know that Connor would do it. I, I can't call Connor a chicken, but you're talking about a Volvo versus a Mack truck. So I got to let him slide on there. George, on the other hand, George St. Pierre might be in your future. That's very realistic. Whoa, that'd be fun. That would be fun. I mean, that would really be some fun. And you might have to go to Canada to get it. Oh, I would love to. I mean, it's yeah. not its not as though, uh, you know, bring, insulting an entire country is above you. So, yeah. right, you, <laughs> you may be going to Montreal. Uh, Only you will find a way. But that is that is very possible. I completely agree. Have you ever met him? No, I've never met him. It's probably best you don't because he's very hard to not like. Really? Yeah, he's very hard to not like. Yeah, okay. kind of a quiet guy. Yeah. He is pretty hard to not like. But, I mean, look, it's it's competition, and you're right. If they want to find out who the best is, should you unify and George is still in that conversation, I mean, boom, got to put you two together. Or he can retire. That's okay, too. Yeah. But if he was to come back, it would have to be against you.